Welcome everyone to the teaching e forum health 3.0 session biotech, biopharma, genomics, and nanotech. My name is Victoria Pavlova, and together with my great colleague Denitza, we will be moderating this session today. Before uh, we continue, I would like to say that Invest Horizon is an acceleration program which is financed and promoted by the European Commission in association with Eureka. We, TIF2, are the coordinating partner together with the rest of the partners, which are BPI France, ESF Business School, Meta, BWCon, Eura, and EBN. Uh, we have some housekeeping crews here. For signs that we are recording this session. So if anyone doesn't agree with being recorded, please write so in the chat and we will pause the rec recording and start it again once you finish. Another one is to please rename yourself with name, surname, and company. So we have a better idea who is here in the room. And third uh, housekeeping crew is to turn off your microphone unless you're invited to speak and please use the chat functionality to ask your questions. This is the program for the session. We are uh, finishing with the opening. Then we will have the investors introductions. Each investor will have 30, uh, 30 seconds uh, for introduction. And then we will continue with the pitching session. We have seven companies today. Each company will have five minutes to pitch, four minutes for q &A. And of course, we'll have an evaluation from the jury members. My colleague Denitza will uh, paste now in the chat the link to the evaluation forum. We will share the results with each uh, uh, company. Uh, the evaluation forum is anonymous. And let's continue with the session. The, um, the investors uh, that are going to be present uh, today here in the room are these ones, and I would like uh, to, I would like to kindly invite Klaus to introduce him, himself shortly. Uh, ah, hello. So, uh, my name is Klaus Berding. I'm a partner with Breslin AG and uh, also managing partner of my own uh, life science and financing. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we are uh, active as corporate finance advisors, so raising equity for startups, and we are also engaged in uh, business development, uh, also with the top tier pharma companies. And uh, we are doing investments when teaming up with academia or uh, spin offs from corporates, where we also take an active position. That's for, that's for the moment. Thank you for the introduction. Now I would like to invite Rup to introduce himself. Yeah, hi, uh, Rup Chandwani, um, founder of uh, Mazards. We're an executive search business uh, focusing purely on life sciences, uh, helping companies um, build their uh, international presence through um, important executive capability. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing all these companies today. Thanks. Thank you for your introduction. I would like to invite Gabriela, uh, Gabriela to introduce herself next. Yes, thank you, Victoria. Um, I'm Gabriela Letha, representing Villa Finance. So we're a multifamily office based in Zurich, Switzerland. And we carry out investments in digital technology and life science. And within life science, we do digital health, medtech and pharma investments. Um, which we do, our sweet spot is Series A and Series B, um, and the investment size ranges from 200,000 to 10 million in a particular company. i um, excited to see the pitches today, and thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Alexander, would you like to introduce yourself next? Hello, my name is Alexander Mokretsky. I'm from Starfinder, which is an investment fund from, from Poland, Warsaw. Uh, we are investment on uh, on early stage. We actually we have two investment vehicles, one of the, uh, which invest on very early stage in on seed and pre-seed. Uh, and uh, the, um, uh, another investment vehicle invests in uh, um, 
Series A uh, all around the, uh, the Europe. We invest uh, on uh, um, deep tech startups, uh, which uh, have uh, a lot of a lot in, in common with, uh, with technologies. And uh, we are looking for medical devices. We are looking for, uh, for digital technologies. We are, we are looking for engineering solutions and uh, all related to, to deep tech. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. And next, I would like to invite Katel. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Katel Soma, and I'm uh, representing uh, TVM Capital, one of the oldest transatlantic fund based in Munich. Out of our most uh, recent fund of up to a billion US dollars, we are investing in uh, um, therapeutics, early stage single assets. And uh, besides that, uh, we are uh, also investing in uh, medtech, digital and diagnostics companies, uh, more at a later stage. So, nice to meet you. Thank you. Giovanni, would you like to introduce yourself next? Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Giovanni Rizzo. I'm venture partner in uh, Indaco Venture Partners. Uh, Indaco Venture Partners it's um it's a vc firm from uh, from italy um there are five funds uh, this is the 51 fund that we are doing at the moment uh, uh, we are uh, about to close uh, a new round uh, uh, you know of the new fund which is only for therapeutics but at the same time which is a pan european uh, fund at the same time indaco can invest in in digital and medtech as well thank you for your introduction uh, Daniel Bego from Inc. Capital and Lynn Collins from Inex, Inex Expand will join us a bit later. So I will continue with announcing the first presenter. This is Avital from Neuroscience Therapeutics. Avital, would you like to start sharing your presentation? Sure. You will have five minutes to finish and four minutes for Jenny. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, hi, so my name is Avital Pushet, and I'm the head of the ADS clinical program at Neurosense Therapeutics. Um, Neurosense was established about five years ago following an inspiring meeting between Alon Binun, our CEO, and Shai Rishoni, an ADS patient. Um, at the time, Shai was completely paralyzed and he communicated only via his eyes with a computer program. Um, Alon was blown away by how Shai was um, doing so much for the ARS community, um, only despite his, his disability, and he was inspired to take action in the field as well. Um, and that's how Neurosense was born. Um, so in quite a short time, we've achieved quite a lot. Um, we had amazing preclinical results in two models of ARS zebrafish, which led to our first clinical trial in ARS patients that showed um, it was completed sex successfully in January. Um, we also received orphan designation from both the FDA and EMA, and we had our first patent granted with a second one also in the works. Um, and lastly, we've reached with the FDA about our program utilizing the 505B2 pathway. Um, a quick look at our pipeline will tell you that in ARS we're currently in the clinical phase and in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases we have begun uh, initial preclinical studies. Among the many merits of investing in Neurosense, we're developing a non-invasive treatment for multiple neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and in ARS, we've had excellent preclinical results and also prom promising clinical results. And today I'll focus on our ARS pro program. Um, patients diagnosed with ARS experience paralysis that spreads throughout their body, um, inevitably leading to death within two to five years from the diagnosis. And the cause of death is usually uh, due to respiratory failure. Um, there are 5,000 people diagnosed with ARS each year, uh, 20,000 people in the US, and about half a million uh, worldwide, about 50,000 in, in Europe. And from these figures, we learned that ARS is a huge unmet need. Um, and to continue with that, there are only two current treatments for ARS approved in the US, and only one of them is approved in, in Europe. Both of them have very limited efficacy, extending patients' lives by only a few months. 
Um, the last few decades have seen many failures in ALS drug development for a few reasons, mainly being the problematic preclinical models, as well as the fact that ALS is a very complex disease and targeting only one pathway is, is not good enough. Um, therefore, a new approach was needed and we have developed a combined therapy targeting multiple disease pathways. The main pathology that our drug Prime C aims to target in ALS are considered hallmarks in the field, um, and they include dysregulated RNA metabolism, iron accumulation, and neuroinflammation. And Prime C is a unique formulation of a combination of two FDA approved drugs, ciprofloxacin and celecoxib, which have been found to work synergistically on, on more than one target. In preclinical studies, PRIME-C improved the motor function of two models of ALS zebrafish and caused the recovery of motor neurons, neuromuscular junction structures, and microglia cells. And these results exceeded all results seen previously in these models. So following the incredible zebrafish results and in conversation with the world-renowned clinicians who encourage us to begin a clinical study, we moved into the clinical phase. Um, and we treated ALS patients with Prime-C in a small open label study with 15 patients, um, which showed that the drug was safe and tolerable with also promising clinical signals in two gold standard measurements in ALS clinical world, which are the FVC, which is a respiratory function test, um, and the ALS-FRS, which assesses overall function of ALS patients. And a summary of our results shows that Prime-C patients declined less per month than their counterparts in a virtual control. And we also reduced deterioration in the respiratory decline measured by the FVC. And lastly, we observed that patients in the study with low BMIs deteriorated less, indicating that a higher dose of Prime-C might be more beneficial. So what's next? We're moving to the next part of our clinical development and we're planning a robust clinical phase, two, three phase study. Um, and in parallel, we're currently in preparations towards an IPO later this year. And we also have plans to continue our developments in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. And to finish off, I just wanted to share with you our very capable team made up of experts in the field, um, and also our board of directors and scientific advisors, all of whom are top tier businessmen, scientists and clinicians with vast experience in the field. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now I would like to open the floor for questions from the jury members. Dear jury members, please unmute yourself and ask directly or indicate in the chat that you have a question. I have a quick question, and uh, but thank you for the Abitabi for the um, for the pitch. I mean, uh, is the formulation also um, using an optimized? Uh, um, Design of the of the molecules, or uh, is a uh, is the the the, the approved one as it is. Yeah, no. So um, our formulation is an extended release formulation, um, which basically the two compounds have very different PK profiles. And what we've done in the formulation is kind of sync their profiles so that there's a constant level of the drugs in the blood. Um, and, and the thought is for patients to take it chronically um, so that there'll always be those levels of the, of the drug. Thanks. And also, uh, obviously, uh, one of our patents is, is on the formulation. Thank you. I see that Klaus has a question. Mm, yes. Uh, thank you, Abital. Uh, quite interesting presentation. I think uh, medication or treatments are urgently needed, and I would support uh, uh, the fact that uh, I also see all working with companies who are targeting different, different approaches because uh, one target is in this disease is not enough. Um, uh, regarding uh, your regarding uh, Parkinson and uh, Alzheimer specifically, is it the same uh, compound or working with different combination? Um, so we're still um, um, working on, on the combination, but it will be um, a similar combination. It may not include both of the drugs, but it will definitely include one of them. Um, and we might have an additional add-on also. But, mm -hmm. the, but, but our philosophy is, is to use um, drugs which are approved and to combine them in a way that no one thought of before um, because it's a quick way to market. It's helpful to patients to, to, mm -hmm. 
develop drugs that way. And you mentioned we have some uh, information about biodistribution. Uh, does it uh, your compound also uh, go into the brain, or is it uh, just a systemic approach? Yeah, no, it, it, it goes into the CNS and it passes the blood brain barrier. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have uh, time for one more question. Yes. Um, thank you, Avita, for the presentation. Could you describe a bit further the structure you're going to take for phase G3? Yeah, sure. Um, so in ALS, I, I don't know how much you know, but in ALS, um, the two main uh, endpoints that you look at um, are ALS, FRS, and FVC, as well as survival. So those are going to be the main endpoints, the primary endpoints of our, of our study. Um, and we're planning a nine-month study um, with about 300 patients with three arms, um, which will be a, um, we'll have two separate doses and a placebo arm um, with... Um, what else can I tell you? <laughs> um, multiple sites worldwide, um, in the US and Europe and uh, Israel also, because that's where we originate from. Okay. Have you already identified the sites? Um, there are several clinicians who we work with who have already expressed interest in being some of the sites, but we haven't identified all the sites. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the preclinical efforts for Parkinson's, um, how far are you there? Um, initial, very, very beginning of, of, um, of the studies. When would you expect the results? Um, in Alzheimer's, um, I'd say in a few months. In Parkinson's, probably a bit longer than that, like uh, six months, half a year, something like that. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. We are uh, done with the questions. And we'll continue with the next company. The next company to present is a Dutch one by Mimi Biotech. I would like to invite DPJ to share his screen. Yeah, sure. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I'm going to start. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. I am DPJ Ghatori, the CEO of Bimini Biotech. And we are a spin-off from the University Medical Center Utrecht in the Netherlands, uh, based on 30 years of pioneering research in the lab of Professor Fer Strauss. We are developing anti-cancer compounds uh, that target the growth hormone IGF-1 axis. Uh, if you don't know about it, this is a central axis in many biological pathways, including metabolism uh, and so on, cell growth, et cetera. But the several studies have shown that this pathway is dysregulated in uh, various cancer indications. And if you can target this excess, uh, this excess completely, you can ob obtain a very strong anti-cancer effect. And that's why many companies have previously tried it and failed. And we have identified a method uh, to target this excess in a manner which is nature mimicking. And when I say nature mimicking, I really mean nature mimicking uh, because uh, a similar experiment of nature is found in Laron dwarfism. Uh, these are dwarfs that, uh, that live in Ecuador and a few other countries that have a rare mutation that leads to complete depletion of the growth hormone receptor, uh, which leads to disruption of this growth hormone IGF-1 axis and makes them dwarfs, as you can see, reduced growth. But it also protects them uh, from cancer and age-related disorders like dementia, stroke, Alzheimer's, uh, and, and others, and diabetes. And we have found a way to mimic this uh, using small molecules. So what our molecules do is very similar to what happens in Laron dwarfs, is, uh, but not at the genetic level, but rather at the protein level. Our molecules uh, disrupt the synthesis of the growth hormone receptor and lead to depletion of growth hormone receptor from the cells, very similar to what happens in Laron dwarfs, and then produce an anti-cancer effect. Uh, there has been a intensive hit to lead screening campaign uh, with over 39,000 compounds from a smart library and three lead assets were identified from which BM001 is the one uh, we are pursuing at this point towards the clinic. Uh, the patent application has been filed and we are currently working on additional uh, compounds to expand our patent portfolio. We have obtained very good in vitro results and also in vivo proof of concept. So the first one shown here is triple negative breast cancer, a very aggressive form of breast cancer. And in mice xenografted with MDA MB231 cell lines, you can see within three weeks, there is a drastic reduction of tumor size and a reduction in circulating IGF-1. This is a, a key biomarker 
of uh, disruption of this Ig of this axis as also seen in Laron dwarfs who have low IGF-1 levels in their plasma. The compound also had a very good tolerance and uh, safety profile. In addition to this, we also performed a proof of concept in colorectal cancer, which was also identified during in vitro studies and also epidemiologically shown to be a prime indication for targeting of this axis. And our compound showed a very good dose dependent decrease in uh, tumor size. And this was a, starting at a hundred millimeter cube and going all the way up to 1500 millimeter cube in control. And once again, a good safety profile with no decrease in body weight uh, and no change in internal organs or internal organ safety. And we are currently pursuing colorectal cancer as our primary indication for a variety of reasons, which I can explain later. We have also performed the in vitro ADME and in vivo PK work, which all are show good results and good druggability of our compound. So at this point, uh, we are in the preclinical stage and we have raised pre-seed financing of about 750,000 euros and about to close another uh, equity round to reach about a million. At this point, we are raising additional seed financing of about 2 million to complete the IND filing studies and move towards first in human. Uh, and we aim to complete first in human uh, by 2025, at which point we aim to enter into a co-development deal with a large pharma partner uh, with whom we collaborate for the next phase and then finally out license the compound as an exit deal. Our team is a mix of young entrepreneurs like myself and Moritz who is the CEO and experienced scientists like Herr and many other scientists from uh, University of Utrecht and different companies. Clinical experts like Professor Mark Peters, who is the head of oncology at University Hospital Antwerp and the CMO of the company, and several serial entrepreneurs like Hank and Ernst, who have multiple years and have started and exited several biotechs themselves. So I welcome you uh, to ask me all kinds of questions and potentially uh, to join us in our journey to beat this disease. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, DPJ. Now I would like to invite the Zoom members. I can see that Divine already has a question. Yeah, hello, everybody. So yeah, a couple of questions. One, thank you for the presentation. One is about um, uh, the, the animal model that you used. Did you use any PDX for the colon cancer or you used just a xenograph? So currently we have used the HCT116 uh, xenograph because in in vitro studies, we saw that Keras mutant cell lines were showing a better response in HCT116, one, one of those cell lines. We have a PDX study plan that uh, we are going to execute in a couple of months in Colorado. Yeah, okay. And the second question is about the mechanism of action, meaning, you know, are you inhibiting or, you know, all the pathway of the growth hormone? Uh, do you have any adverse events that you are considering when you go on uh, on the patients? Yeah, so looking at the Laron phenotype, there are some issues that make, um, for example, regarding liver, liver size, uh, so hepatic uh, issues, also regarding lipid metabolism uh, and could be glucose metabolism and general carbohydrate metabolism. So these are issue, issues that indeed we have to uh, keep in mind and we are going to uh, extensively investigate in the next phase. Thank you. One question here on the, on the patient population, if you have any strategy for the selection and the enrichment. Sorry, for patient pop, uh, selection yeah. during the trial? Yes. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so the first thing that we are looking at at this point together with University uh, Hospital Antwerp is, are there any specific genetic mutations that we could look at? That's also part of the organoids and PDX studies uh, that we could use for pre-selection. Obviously you can simply look at IGF-1 levels, which is still, uh, there are conflicting reports whether IGF-1 levels could be used as an initial prognostic marker or just uh, growth hormone receptor histopathology is another another one that you could look at, uh, but we are also trying to establish more solid uh, companion markers that we could use. Thank you, we have time for one more question. Anyone else from the other members who would like to ask a question? Please feel free to unmute yourselves or indicate in the chat. Well, if nobody has question, I can make last question. Go on. 
So, uh, what about you? I want to think about the technology. You said as my molecule, but you didn't say what is it. What is actually what is it about? Sorry, I, I may, couldn't understand the question. I want to you know you said that it's a small molecule, but I would not know actually what it is. Can you disclose it, or uh, is something confidential? Uh, you mean the structure of the so it's basically a, yeah I can give you the basic characteristic molecular weight three hundred and forty uh, highly lipophilic uh, but but I think the patent will be published soon and then you can just go okay, online no and, and look okay, at it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, DJ, for your presentation, and thank you to the jury members for asking the question. Thank now you. I would like to invite uh, our next presenter. This is Henrik from Regenics. Henrik, please uh, unmute yourself, turn, yes, turn your camera and share your presentation. Yes, thank yes. you uh, very much. I hope you can hear me. Good afternoon yes. and uh, thank you for, to the investors for uh, zooming in this afternoon. Uh, my name is Henrik Lund. I'm the CEO of Regenix, which is a Norwegian uh, biomarine uh, biotech company localized in Oslo. And we are um, working in the space of wound healing. While looking at this uh, photo from the sea, uh, I just want to remind you that uh, Norway is a big exporter of marine products about 10 billion euros every year and 60% going to the EU. Uh, the concept of using marine, you know, sustainable uh, green, blue things for doing therapeutic intervention is, is not completely new. And the basis for what I'm gonna show you here is that we have taken the concept of wound healing in fish, which is extremely rapid and extremely uh, important, of course, for survival and trying to uh, move this into meaningful therapeutics for humans. So the offering that we have for you uh, to look at this that is that we have developed three products which are now one to two years uh, to dossier submission. We have selected the uh, primary US route for this because of the medical device uh, route in the US is still uh, more open than, than Europe, but of course the CE uh, route later on will be, uh, will be used. So these are the two medical devices first, which is called Colix and Vernix. And these are class three devices, rule 13. It means that they will be followed by a clinical file, which for us is, 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 is uh, quite advanced. The uniqueness of the first product, Colex, is that we, it is the first bioactive 3D printed wound treatment made solely and only from sustainable marine sources. And I'll come back to that. It contains a patented substance, which is, we have worked on for several years with the university called HGX. And the Vernix, which is the second product you see in this slide, is also a class 3 device, uh, and it's a different uh, formulation, uh, and also with the same regulatory option. The third product is a new novel enzyme, which is cloned in our laboratory in a niche market in uh, wound treatment, which is enzymatic debridement. Uh, these companies that are listed here are the one we are discussing this with for the target licensing. And uh, wound clarity is a clearly a drug. Uh, it's a US biologics license application in the MEA uh, centralized procedure. Uh, regulatory dossier, and we are uh, developing this for a potential target for an IND investigational new drug. And this is also a first class, completely new, never seen enzyme. We have filed the US patent for this in July 2019. It's a very interesting niche market. This is the finance plan and what we have done so far. We raised about 3.5 million euro. We just now in March uh, exercised uh, some uh, shareholder um, uh, warrants that priced the company to post money 10.4 million. We also received a very nice grant from EU, the Blue Bio Era Grant, Seal of Excellence, to reach those two targets that are listed here. The plan is now to see if we can um, have investors for an additional 10 million euro at the price of 15.6 million euro uh, for the company. And the board is now determined to go to the Euros, uh, Euro next growth in Oslo by the end of next year. Um, the, the products are um, 
uh, have this timeline for submission, and I don't want to comment it because it's easy to read. The primary indication is second degree burn because that's where we have the clinical proof of concept. And there's also other indication that is possible to follow on. This is the concept of the first product. We use tunicate from the sea, which usually is the uh, seen in the woods. We mix it with alginate, which is a uh, uh, new uh, industry development, and mix it with HDX and 3D printed it under the auspices of the EU funding. This is a very busy slide for a five minute pitch. However, the pilot is list and is done. We've done the bio-release in comparison with existing patches. We have bioactivity in human fibroblasts. We've done the human burn wound closure studies. Also together with one of the largest wound companies in the world, we have done a diabetes type of proof concept for, for inflammation. And we've done a blinded human skin efficacy study. This is also busy, but it's a list of the uh, clinical uh, program for safety to date, 200 patients. We also have about the PMS study, which forms the basis for the ethical committee review of the clinical part, which is about 5,000 intact skin, that is. We have two uh, species uh, animal studies and a whole series of in vitro studies. What we can say is that this is a very clean efficacy study, and uh, it's supported by a very strong patent portfolio, four classes, 10 issued patents, and it's within the composition area. There's patent expiry from 2027 to 2039 without further filing, but we are, of course, filing continuously to support this process. The price of this product is in between and priced according to the uh, patch market in the US to estimate and to satisfy the standalone use in the US Medicare. If you want a full presentation for this, so please contact me and uh, uh, I'll be happy to brief you further onto the depth of the documentation, how we proceed in our commercial model, which I didn't have time to fully explore with you. So that's uh, the, my mail address here, henrik.lund at regenix.nu. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you Henrik, for your presentation. Now I open the floor for questions. I see that Klaus already indicated. Klaus, would you like to ask a question? Uh, yes, hello Henrik. Uh, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, um, uh, I'm interested uh, to hear you have alginate, uh, which is uh, one compound uh, in the first product. So uh, do you need, uh, uh, do you have uh, certain specifications? Because uh, sea seaweed is a, is a wide area. So also the characteristics are a little bit different. Uh, that's my first question. And then uh, looking at your financing, I think the, um, well, from, from my perspective, looking at it, it looks, uh, it looks a little bit, uh, bit odd because there are, there are small steps a year. Uh, we're going from 1 million and then you have the big financing. So uh, at first instance, it looks a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit odd. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's a good question. First on alginate, this uh, product can use uh, micro, uh, alginate and nano uh, alginate. So uh, uh, the alginate forms here are uh, considered as GRAS, GRAS by the US regulatory authorities for the micro alginate is already approved as a non-toxic and fully excipient in the US uh, medical device industry. The nano approval, which we have used in our project is still under review, but we expect that that would be a fully generally regarded as safe excipient in in this uh, in this project um, regarding finances yes uh, i will take that back to my board <laughs> it is a uh, a step by step uh, of course um, as you uh, well know that this is driven by uh, the board uh, if you look from the ceo perspective yes i would like a large sum of money right away but uh, you know i think it has uh, a root in the fact that we have been able to attract a lot of public funding and as you know the funding strategy has been to buffer or to match the public funding stream. And, and also uh, that is the case for the EIS, the, uh, the ERANET grant that we just received, which lasts until um, Mar uh, August 23. Yeah, uh, no, that, that's fine. There might be a specific circumstance, but uh, I'm also in this uh, business and I know it's uh, if you always start again and after half a year or you have to, to move again and... and uh, yeah. Speak. So it's a, it's a, it's a, also a problem for the operative team eh, to manage everything, the financing and uh, and the work which you have to do in the company. 
Yeah, I would just add to that that the uh, efficacy trials needed in in and this is not that costly because it's what's called a bilateral uh, uh, contralateral burn study in arms in patients, right? So you use one arm to control the other with placebo. So when you ask and talk to the regulatory experts, we used to say that this is sufficiency for a proof of concept efficacy studies and the safety dossier is also already completed. Thank you. Um, now I would like to invite the next presenter, which is uh, Anthony from Biontaxis. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to share my project with you. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, yes. um, can you see it? Yes. Could you please make it full okay. screen? Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, okay. Is it's okay? Is it, can you see that all right? So fine. Okay, so I'm Anthony Matilda. I'm the CEO from Bion Taxis which was uh, uh, established on July 2018 as a spin-off biotech company from the Research Institute of Marseille and the pharmaceutical company Gentech, which uh, are located in Badalona in Barcelona, Spain. Um, as a result of the Texia Academy of Research that have been going for, uh, for many years, in, in specifically from 2014. So Biontaxis has developed a life-changing therapy uh, product for phagetaxia. So phagetaxia is a rare inherited progressive neurodegenerative disease that involves child health and aging aspects. It is caused by a functional deficit of progress in protein leading to mitochondrial dysfunction. Symptoms include mainly severe motor and cardiac deficits and patients are early confined to a wheelchair for life. The disease is caused by decreased levels of the mitochondrial protein fratexin, affecting essential functions in the spinal cord, in the cerebellum, in the brain, heart, pancreas, and liver and current interventional treatment. Uh, Fletzataxia represents a bargain of over 380 million per year to the public health systems in the European Union. <clears throat> Biotaxis has developed BTX-101, which is the first-in-class aging therapy for the curative treatment for Fletzataxia. And ours is the only product capable of restoring both in vivo neurological and cardiac deficits. This is very, very important, as I will mention later. Um, BTX um, has shown an excellent biodistribution, safety, and efficacy. And this is achieved by a unique and patented combination of DNA sequences that mimic the expression of the endogenous levels of rataxin protein. This is very important because under or over expression of rataxin is toxic to the cells. Um, Preclinical validation of our product in two different uh, mouse models of the disease, one acute and one chronic, have proven the following. An excellent targeting and transduction in affected cells, which are neurons of the spinal cord and brain, heart and pancreas. We have proven restoration of ataxia, motor coordination and additional neurological deficits. We have proven also restoration of the electrophysiological properties of sensory neurons. And our product preserves the axon size, myelinization, mitochondrial function in dorsal ganglion neurons. I show my electron microscopy data. I can show you all these data. I can send you all these data uh, later if you're interested. Uh, our product also preserves the axon size, myelinization of mitochondrial function in dorsal ganglion neurons, which are the main target in the disease. And very importantly, um, we are able to preserve the cardiomyopathy through the maintenance of the cardiac left ventricle wall thickness and abolition of toxic mitochondrial function accumulation. So basically, uh, our product proves safe and long-term effective. In December 2020, the impacts obtained the European Zero of Excellence for this project. And we've established a unique market positions. Since in, since in contrast to competition, BTS-101 is the only product capable today of correcting both neurological and cardiac effects, as I mentioned before. Considering a conservative incidence of 2.8 cases in 100,000 individuals, we have estimated our treatment could reach easily 8,100 patients with phage ataxia. With a conservative price of 180,000 euros per dose, the estimated revenues are 4,800 million euros per year. 
I cannot find it again. We have established a unique market position because BioNTax is focuses exclusively on credit ataxia. We have projected our product for 20 years with an international patent currently in national phases. We have obtained outstanding and solid data, technical data, and we are the only solution to yield endogenous levels of products in protein to restore both neurological and cardiac efficiency. To develop our product under GLP conditions required for clinical compliance and tested clinically in phase 1B to A um, studies, we have estimated we need around 14 million euros over the next four years. This amount would be used for regulatory and clinical manufacturing comp compliance and the clinical study. BTX would be our license to pharma in 2025 once clinical phase is successfully completed for further development, clinical validation phase three, and market commercialization. Our exit strategy consists of a B2B model with a trade cell consisting of our licensing to pharma in 2025 once clinical validation is successfully completed after the clinical phase 1B to A. And finally, but not less important, we have been able to gather an excellent team of experts on gene therapy, molecular neuroscience, and very importantly, on business and drug development. And in addition, we are supported by an external committee of the excellent scientific, uh, excellent scientific and technical advisors and also on gene therapy. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Anthony. Now I would like to invite the Zero members to either unmute themselves and ask their questions or to indicate in the chat. Yeah, I have just two points here. The first one, um, I saw in your timelines a big animal studies that are planned, but the probably I missed. Um, did you did you try this uh, this therapy in uh, also in mouse? like in, uh, you know, ju juvenile, reproductive. And then the second question is, uh, um, which kind of uh, target population uh, you are going uh, after with this therapy? And uh, uh, what is, and the third question is uh, the, the administration route. Okay, uh, I will try to remember all the three questions. Um, we, have the, um, we have been tested this product in two different mouse models, one acute and one chronic, and this is very important. Uh, for the chronic disease, um, as you know, um, these mouse models are not perfect, so they all have um, defects. We chose this particular one because they showed both cardiac and neurological deficits, which is the only one. So the chronic mouse model we used, we uh, provided the, 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 the administration intrathecally, okay? This is our intrathecal uh, administration, one single dose, before, in the chronic mouse model, before the symptoms started. So all the mice after two years, they are perfectly fine. They are, uh, they can walk, they, they, they live, they don't have any problems with the heart, by the microscopy, um, um, and, and pathological anatomy, whatever. Um, so basically, um, in the chronic mouse model, our, our treatment preserves the initiation of the symptoms. And then very recently, in December, in December, we started the study with an acute mouse model, which has been recently generated injection labs in the United States. And then also by a single dose administration, we are able, um, in administering the drug, uh, when the mice are already affected, when they are clearly ataxic, they cannot walk, we have um, we have a very um, outstanding recovery of these mines, uh, more than 60% of recovery of ataxia, fine motor coordination with the notch path has with the physiologically. So basically, um, at the beginning, we were thinking on choosing patients for the clinical trial and just, you know, with, a, with an onset of the symptoms, they, they, they have motor coordination problems, but they can still walk and they are not confronted. Wheelchair. But after seeing our, our results with the acute mouse model, we, were, we are also interested to try these patients who are already more affected and they are in the, in the wheelchair confined and they have real uh, stable ataxia. So we are looking for those two populations. And obviously, you know, uh, once this is empirically tested in patients, we will be able um, to see what is the percentage of recovery of our product. Um, I have to mention that these mice after two years old, they are fine. They don't have any type of toxicity. We have been using um, doses comparable to those um, used in humans in clinical trials. Um, uh, they don't have um, 
immunological problems or hepatotoxicity or whatever else. They are perfectly fine. They don't have ataxia, they don't have any problems with the heart. So this is a very good model. That's why we want to move now to the big animal model in order to, to, to check the, the biodistribution data and to check also the, the toxicity and safety of our product. Thank you, Antonio. I hope uh, you answered all of uh, Kapil's questions. Uh, yes, uh, Anthony, uh, a short question uh, regarding the clinical development plan. So that's uh, a little bit far ahead. But did you have already some preliminary discussion with FDA or the uh, European regulators? And uh, I would also interest in maybe if you discussed uh, uh, how you move forward with the vector, uh, what you have to deliver there. And uh, patient groups, I think you have already attached to patient groups because it could be also a way to, uh, to fill the clinical trials and uh, to, to get support additional. We, have, we are preparing now yes. the validation with the European Medicine Agency. Uh, indeed, we are requesting a brief um, scientific report um, before the end of this year. Um, where we are going to validate um, uh, the GMP manufacturing and clinical compliance of our product. Um, we've been discussing this with two different providers, one in America and one in Europe. And we want to test this. We also want to validate our dose, the dose of the to minister. Um, I don't think we will have the, the, the data from the non-human non primates yet, but um, if we have, if we have it, because we're in the, starting this study in the, in the next weeks, uh, we will also provide the data to validate it. And then say we will test with the, the European Medicine Agency to 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 our 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 plan for the clinical trial. We have been discussing this with two different medical advisors, and we have been um, able to define very well the, the the clinical endpoints that we want to test in the type of population. We are not looking at pediatric patients because um, in order to avoid pipe regulatory and pediatric pediatric regulatory. Um, uh, compliance, but we want to check that in Indian colors, you know, those patients, uh, at least 20, 30 patients for the clinical test that um, uh, have um, already been diagnosed with ataxia, they already um, have movement problems, but they are still can um, be autonomous and can walk on their own. So let's see if we can prevent um, further development. And in, in, in parallel, we are also looking for this type of patients um, uh, which are more severely affected than they're on the wheelchair to see what is the, the, the degree of recovery. Um, but um, but that, that is what we aim to validate with the, with the European Medicine Agency before the end of the year. Thank you. It's time to continue with the next presenter. I saw that Rup also wrote a question, but I would like to kind of ask you to use the one-to-one -one meetings platform or send a private message. We also have uh, private messages on our platform. Thank you once again. And now uh, I would like to invite Morgan from CD Life Biotech to share her presentation. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I, it is a pleasure to presenting you CB Life today. I will uh, share my screen with you. Okay, can you? Just a second. Can, can yes, you, you can see it. Okay. So I am Morgan Rousselo. I am the CEO and the co-founder of CB Life, uh, founded in March 2019 with three other partners. CB Life is a French preclinical stage biotechnology company focused on the development of small molecules that have an original mechanism of action. They can deprogram cell death, inhibiting simultaneously two types of regulated cell death pathway, which has an necroptosis and the ferroptosis. Those two types of regulated cell death pathway has been recently described in several severe pathologies, playing a key role in those pathologies. They are activated under pathological context and they can lead to tissue destruction and organ failure. We are developing our first in-class drugs to, to, to address an unmet medical need in acute liver failure and acute kidney injury, but also for ocular pathologies and neurodegenerative diseases. All of these diseases have in common the synergistic induction of necroptosis and ferroptosis. So to be efficient, it is important to block the both regulated cell death pathway in the same time. And CB Life is the only one to, uh, to develop such a therapeutic approach, having in its pipeline dual inhibitor of regulated necrosis. 
Among the 45 patented molecules today, we have selected one lead, which is actually under preclinical development to treat acute kidney injury and acute liver failure. We have chose to address first acute and orphan diseases as gateway indications in order to have a simpler and faster development plan and to reach more quickly the proof of concept in the patient and validate our therapeutic approach. That will facilitate our development for neurodegenerative diseases and ocular pathologies, which represent a larger estimated market. All of our applications are covered by four families of patents, exclusively licensed to CB Life, and four of them have already been granted in the US and in Europe. We have obtained a full package of in vitro and in vivo data. With our leads, we have um, shown that the, the molecules is well tolerated after several administrations and can protect the kidney and the liver on four different models of acute liver failure and acute kidney injuries. We have also obtained a full package of in vitro data on the several models of neurodegenerative diseases and ocular pathologies with no toxicity observed at efficient dose. Of course, we are not the only one to, de, to address, to address uh, the, those unmet medical needs and to develop inhibitors of regulating necrosis. The competitors are GSK, Sanofi Denali, Lili or Rigel, and they develop selective inhibitors of necroptosis or ferroptosis, and they're actually under clinical development to treat neurodegenerative diseases and inflammatory diseases. However, there is no competition on our therapeutic approach. There is no dual inhibitor of regulating necrosis under development currently. And we have shown a competitive edge on several in cellular models, as you can see here, where uh, in the presence of our molecules, the cells are much more protected than in the presence of one of the drugs of the components. The project is managed by a complementary and experimented team focused on drug development. We are four founders. I am a scientist and I have several uh, entrepreneurial experience and I have more than 15 years experience in the development of drug. Claire Deleuze, she is the CTO and one of the inventors and the two of the co-founders are renewed scientists specialized in, in regulated cell death pathway and interaction with protein kinase. CB Life team is composed of seven operational people with different technical and expertise skills, and we've planned to recruit more profile to enhance the experiments of the team. And in the meantime, we have surrounded ourselves with two strong advisory boards composed of 17 internationally renewed experts. The objective of CB Life, it is to develop its drugs until the clinical development and then enter into a partnership with the pharmaceutical laboratories. For the acute indications, we would like to move the drugs until the proof of concept in the patient. And for the chronic indications, we would like to put in place an R&D partnership with the pharmaceutical laboratories before the clinical development. To finance our development, we have already raised 3.5 million euros with two seeds rounds plus grants, several grants, and the iLab grants we have received last year. And we are now preparing a Series A for the beginning of 2022 and plus grants for a total amount of 5 million euros in order to finance the CTA and IRD preparation for the acute indications and to finish the preclinical development for the clinic indication and preparing the R&D partnership. We are supported with uh, several partners. We have put in place several collaboration with academic partners and private laboratories, and we will be happy uh, if you can uh, join us in that uh, entrepreneurial adventure. And I really thank you uh, for your attention. I am ready to answer to your questions. Thank you, Morgan. Giovanni has a question already. Yeah, uh, again, thank you very much for the presentation. Actually, well, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is about um, if uh, the target for necropoptosis and ferropoptosis is the same or are two different targets. That's the first question. There are uh, two this... different, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So you can... it's two different targets. So you okay. cannot disclose, I guess. For the necroptosis, uh, we, we identified the targets. It is a RIK1 protein kinase. 
the same as the one uh, targeted uh, by uh, GSK, San Sanofi, Denali, Odili, or Rigel. And for the ferroptosis, it is a very recently described uh, regulated cell death pathway. We know that our drugs inhibit the uh, peroxidation of the lipid. And we have actually uh, currently a PhD working on the identification of the target. We still uh, have not identified uh, the, the target. Uh, okay, and the second question is quite a curiosity more than a question, you know. So, so if you see the liver failure, you know, you, you actually focus on the paracetamol uh, toxicity of the liver, but actually uh, the necropoptosis uh, necro, uh, is, uh, it's, you know, a mechanism of action also for many other different liver diseases, like, you know, acute and chronic, for instance. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you focus on this, because actually, um, it's, the point is that I, I'm, I'm trying to understand if actually using a drug that can uh, reduce the toxicity of paracetamol or, you know, actually making a washout and using different inhibitors of the, you know, the uh, like to make an example, multi-drug resistant proteins and everything inducing those, those kind of proteins. Do you think it's really the, first, the, the best target for... Uh, a, a compound that is acting on the necropoptosis? Um, so, sorry, I'm not sure that uh, I understand very clearly. Meaning the clinical indication, you know, so, so the reason, the question is, why did you focus on uh, uh, the, yeah, the liver failure due to paracetamol? Okay, so we have already, the first proof of concept we have obtained was on the autoimmune hepato, hepatitis model, and we have published yeah in 2017. Uh, but we know that uh, the development is much easier for paracetamol poisoning, and we are, target, we are targeting with our drugs the same mechanism of action induced uh, in the um, chronic liver diseases or other type of diseases. It is, for us, it is a strategy to, uh, to validate our therapeutic approach more quickly addressing mm. paracetamol poisoning because it is simpler to develop. And we so should- you are not going, So you're not going in, into the clinic for that kind of indication? Sorry? Are the... you going to the clinic for that kind of indication? Yes, we will. Uh, we would like to, to move to the clinic to perform uh, the, uh, the, the phase 1B, 2A, and then, uh, and then uh, license the, the application to- um, to pharmaceutical laboratories. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one very quick question. If anyone from the Zimbabweans would like to ask. Okay, thank you very much, Morgan. Now yeah. I would like to invite the next presenter. This is Claudio from Second Care Biotech. Hello. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Yes, you can see it. And okay, us. thank you. So I'm Claudia, a CFO of Sequencer Biotech. Our body houses a community of trillions of microbes that is unique to each individual, and it's called the microbiome. An imbalance of this community can affect health and represents a risk factor for, for the genesis and evolution of a plethora of chronic disease and pathologies. An epidemic accounting for an estimated 77% of the disease burden in Europe. Thanks to the latest NGS advances, we're increasingly able to see this uh, microbiome community by means of turning a human sample into a DNA sequence. This process that is called raw data generation is now much cheaper and easier than it was in the past. The complexity, hence the real value nowadays, lies in translating microbiome raw data specific to each patient into evidence-based clinical insights and therapeutic option for that patient. The bottleneck nowadays is represented by the fact that a microbiome analysis and its interpretation needs to be curated by expert bioinformaticians and geneticists. This is, a, this is highly expensive, time consuming, and not scalable. In fact, state of the art alternatives are designed for experts working in drug discovery and RD field. Our game-changing game solution, MIC, is the first software solution designed for healthcare application, giving us a first mover advantage on this growing market, a 22% compound annual growth rate. 
MIC is the first decision support uh, platform that helps healthcare practitioners integrate microbiome analysis into clinical practice. MIC gets data proceeding from all different next generation sequencing technologies, analyze it and translate into clinical evidence for the doctor and for the patient. The analysis is the only real time, namely performing three minutes, whether our competitor or whether other softwares need at least two hours. Results are highly personalized and evidence based. The value creation is represented by the automation of the data curation, analysis, and interpretation steps, resulting for healthcare providers in up to 75% cost saving compared to human curated solution very high scalability and the possibility for them to increase a service, service offering for their patients and improve their diagnostics thanks to data-driven exploitation of microbiome data. We started early commercialization of MIC within the public healthcare system in Italy, in Spain and Norway about 12 months ago on key microbiome related disease for clinical paid clinical trials. This partnership are key for revenue generation and for clinical validation of our software. Then we targeted private clinical, cent clinical center and companies that work within the personalized medicine and nutrition and obesity field. Nowadays, we are in the process of applying for the SE EVDR certification within the European Union to comply with the new rules from 2022 and get market ready to scale up our solution. Scale up in terms of clinic diagnostic lab targeted, uh, ta both directly and through touch points, as well as increase the ticket per client with microbiome analysis becoming over time a routinary health check. We will reach public healthcare by converting, progressively turning hospital partners that perform with us the clinical trial into recurring customers. MIC also targets the corporate sector, namely the next generation sequencing facilities. They do possess the hardware for the raw data generation and MIC is the software for them to perform automated analysis and resell it. Oh, just one second, I have a problem. It's not moving. Okay, the pricing model is also very scalable. The platform can be accessed with a monthly subscription fee, then only pay for each analysis performed. We forecast sales growth, scaling up to 42 million by 2024, made possible by the deployment of the different MIC modules, and very importantly, with the implementation of commercial strategy. We need to incorporate sales personnel and CMO. For that, we are currently fundraising 1.6 million euro from venture capital that will generate in three years from, invest, from investment 153% return. MIC is a product by Sequencia Biotech, a, a bioinformatics company from Barcelona founded in 2013. At Sequencia, we are expert in the analysis of the DNA with our in-house developed cutting edge technologies. We have customers from 65 countries. The founders have more than 15 years experience in genomics and are highly reputed scientists in the field. The team also features high level technical experts and business professionals. The team conceived the idea and bootstrapped for, for MIC so far. It's now time to scale MIC up and together without uh, in fundraiser, without investors, make MIC the ultimate software solution for microbiome analysis in Europe. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Claudia. Now I open the floor for questions. The expert members, please uh, unmute yourself and ask your questions directly or indicate in the chat that you have a question. Yes, hello, Claudia. Just to make sure I understood correctly, at the moment you have paid partnerships um, that are ongoing to validate yes. the platform. Yes, uh, currently we have paid partnership with uh, some, some uh, European um, hospitals from Spain, from Italy and from Norway. Uh, I showed the main ones, but we have eight more paid partnerships starting off soon. Paid partnership are necessary for us for the development of like our biomarkers for um, addressing the chronic disease, microbiome related chronic diseases. 
At the same time, we are also uh, performing er early sales of MIC around other microbiome targets, including dysbiosis detection, infection detection, microbiome health status, where our uh, platform is already um, completely functional. Okay, so these clients, the direct sales are already onboarded into the platform yes. and they yes. pay a, they pay. a yes. monthly fee. If, yes, indeed, they pay a monthly fee plus paper analysis, which is basically the, 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 the idea of scalability we have. So the monthly fee is, of course, to access the platform and to monitor the, the, all, the, the patients, but actually they pay for each analysis performed, which make, makes that very scalable for us and for them because it requires no upfront investment. Okay, okay, perfect. And um, how do the paid part, because you say percentage of completion on the slide, how is it structured, the paid partnerships? Well, the paid partnership in some cases, um, particularly uh, with, um, with the Spanish hospitals, uh, proceeded from, like, um, be, um, from, uh, from a public grant that we won in 2019 and then continued. Uh, so basically, it's, um, it's, uh, it's based on, it's, it's a, or it's a completely like a, a paid partnership in, in, in the sense that we have the complete sub subcontracted like projects. So we take care of the next generation sequence from sample collection, next generation sequencing bioinformatics analysis. Mm -hmm. Whether they take care of course of the sampling and uh, of the patient selections and um, yes. Okay, thank you for the clarification. You're very welcome. Thank you. I can see that Kos also has a question. Uh, yes, hello, Claudia. Uh, uh, quick question. Uh, what is your goal or your target in terms of exit? Uh, uh, well, um, in terms of exit, um, the, the majority, um, so nowadays, the majority of bioinformatics company have been exited by the acquisition of M&A uh, by therapeutics companies, because of course, microbiome analysis has emerged a very uh, like validated target for a microbiome based um, pharma. Uh, indeed, in our case, um, that, that, could be, that could be an option or the option could be like a, a public listing. Uh, so continue growing over time. Uh, our main option is not a very short-term exit strategy. Uh, we are looking uh, ahead, basically, at least for a five, seven-year scenario. Yes, that was my thinking, uh, because you have to build, uh, otherwise uh, and then the value would be too low. So uh, yes, develop, also... develop for some years and then see how it ends. <laughs> Yeah, um, whenever I see the hockey stick, um, the hockey stick projections to go from where you are at 600,000 euros to 43 million euros in four years time, that's, that's pretty aggressive growth. Um, but I've not seen anywhere in your, pre in your presentation how you plan to get to that. Yes. Um, you tell us a bit more about that, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, well, first of all, like the, the basic of the of the market scalability is based not only on growing the number of like uh, customers, but it's based on growing the ticket per customer. And the ticket per customer will grow over time with microbiome analysis becoming over time a recurring testing that is performed. Also, the, the, very differently from genomics analysis, microbiome analysis can be performed over time, multiple times, could be performed by the same patient twice per year. So this makes this testing very scalable over time. And so increasing the ticket per sales over time, the, the ticket per client uh, over time. Depending, of, depending on, the, on the target, we will apply a different, and we apply a different a different business strategy. Uh, for the time being, we have been leveraging on, uh, on the company uh, business, on, on the company clients, um, uh, clients portfolio. So we are a company of eight, uh, of, uh, eight years. Um, along the way, we need, to, we need to basically target the clinical center diagnostic lab from six European countries that we have selected, depending on the, on the, on the, on the pro, pro capita expense uh, for personalized medicine. We will target them to, or, or, or uh, through uh, direct sales 
or through distribution. And distribution in this case would be through probiotics companies okay. that are str str strongly related to the microbiome fields. In terms of public healthcare, we will still target mainly, at least for the medium term scenario, Italy and Spain, uh, and where we have very, very strong uh, scientific reputation and links. So we will convert the, 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 the clinical trials partner into recurring ta ta targets over time. And then corporate sequencing center. We work with the four uh, most important European and Asiatic uh, corporate um, sequencing facilities, including Macrogen. Uh, so we have already in place very, very strong uh, like partnerships with them. So we are very well placed to start uh, to start up like commercialization, integration of our platform within their um, within their next next generation sequencing machines. One, this will be ready from our side. Thank you. Now it's time Thank for uh, our Thank last you. presenter. This is Irene from uh, Advanced Dispersed Particles. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for this opportunity today and for your time. I try to share with you my screen. Okay, one moment, please. You can see. Okay, great. Could you hear? Could you see? Yes. No worries. Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Irene Zaldivar. I am the CEO of AD Particles. We produce the first in class high efficiency and both spectrum protection of mineral UV filters for cosmetic industry. UV filters are the most important ingredient for sunscreen products because they block solar radiation. Classical UV filters are chemical filters. They have been used intensively in sunscreen products, but nowadays they are being analyzed due to negative effects such as endocrine disruption skin reaction and skin penetration. Additionally, chemical UV filters don't protect in the both spectrum. Relating to the environment, the impact of the accumulation of chemical UV filter on the oxygen and coral is dramatic. Just to point out, the SDF established as safe only mineral UV filters. Well, the real solution to the market is our exclusive and unique mineral UV filters due to our technological and patent manufacturing process based on dry dispersal methodology. Our ingredients are designed especially for protecting the skin in non-nanoparticles. They protect in the both spectrum due to their composition. Additionally, they are also designed for protecting the environment. They are eco-friendly by Cosmos and EcoCert certification. Our ingredients, based on titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, are globally approved as UV filters. But the important fact here is that they have been certified by American Pharmacopeia, which is one of the strictest regulations for sunscreen products around the world. Relating to the market trends, current data indicates that the expectation of the UV filter in personal care market will reach around 1 million in 2026, which represents a cut of 6.3% during 2021-2026. These attractive provisions are because sunscreen has demonstrated to be essential products for our health, reducing, reducing risk of developing skin, skin cancer by 50% and 24 less skin aging. But on the other side, the market is demanding healthy and sustainable UV filters. In this way, the key market drivers are the protection in the both spectrum, eco-friendly products, and innovative testing. Well, ADP ingredients are totally aligned with these main market drivers. We have been selling in the market for four years. If you take a look at the graph, we are still growing despite COVID. 35% of our turnover was from international markets. We are getting stronger in USA. We had a high product margins and the aim is to maintain it. The profile of our clients are sunscreen products manufacturers. We had our own commercial force in Spain and we had agreement with distributors in relevant countries for cosmetic industry. The indirect competitors are international chemical companies. ADP produce perfect balance side particles which are nano-free with transparent effect on the, on the skin. They protect in the both spectrum. They are safe on the environment and they are the only unique UV filter in the market which include color and protection in only one ingredient, which reduce costs, increase protection and make our products very attractive for other cosmetic applications such as makeup and the aging products. 
ADP is a Spanish company located in the capital, was born as a result of a patent from CSIP, which is one of the top five of research institutions in Europe. One relevant aspect is our technology is protected by patents and trade secrets. We had 11 products in the market divided into families, NGENU and EffectiveU. All of them are produced under the same technological and patent process, which make our products unique. Well, relating to the investment plan, we are looking for 1 million to distribute like this, 32 for increasing production from 20 to 80 towns, 30% for strength, commercial, and marketing. The objective is to penetrate in Asia and Australia markets, both very attractive for cosmetic industry, 38% for new developments. Relating to the, to the financial plan, the amazing challenge is to bring even next year due to important agreements on the table. Well, sorry. Our team is our strength. ADP is for by nine employees who are high, highly qualified and multidisciplinary group. At the sea level, our chief scientific officer and board member, she's a specialist in industrial chemistry. Our production manager, he has worked for ADP from the beginning. And about me, I am a biological scientist with PhD and MBA with more than 30 years of experience in team leadership, entrepreneurship, and business development. Our sales manager, she is also a marketing expert. Less, uh, last but not less, our big challenge is to, position, is, is to continue working and positioning the company as a reference on the market, developing unique ingredients. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Irene. Now I would like to invite the jury members to unmute themselves and ask their questions. All right, so in the chat. Yes, thank you, Irene, for the presentation. So you, you mentioned that your objective is to penetrate a Asian and Australian market. Could you elaborate further on your strategy to do so? Well, um, yes, at the beginning, we are very, nowadays we are more or less strong because okay, we are knowing, um, uh, we, are, we are selling in, in Spain, of course, and we are selling in Europe and we are selling in, in USA. But of course, um, according to the cosmetic industry, Asia, especially, especially Korea and Australia are a re a relevant markets for cosmetic industry, especially for sunscreen products. No? And well, the, in the, yeah, the first approach is look, uh, look for a new distributor, local distributor in this area, because here um, one important point is, okay, our competitors are international chemical companies. Uh, they had a strong uh, commercial force around the world. But in our case, we are strong in our country and but the, with the rest of the, of the world, the, yeah, the, the commercial strategy is to establish a strong collaboration with distributors. Okay, thank you. And other point is that uh, there are no harmonization uh, when we are speaking about sunscreen regulation. In this case, in Europe, uh, sunscreen products are cosmetic products. Uh, for example, in USA, there are uh, over-the-counter OTC. This is, uh, this is one uh, important uh, goal from ADP because now we are registered and we are, 30, uh, we are validate our products um, uh, uh, by uh, um, American Pharmacopeia. But with the rest of the country, with some of them, for example, with Australia, will be necessary also to validate according to this uh, regulation. And then this is a this is a, a phase that we would like to to okay to to achieve with new with new, with new investment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Also has a question. Oh, uh, could you please elaborate a little bit more about the substance you uh, used in uh, in uh, the sun protection cream? Uh, cream, as I understand, uh, uh, you mentioned something about titanium dioxide, uh, which is a chemical substance, and uh, or um, or I just uh, understand something wrong. No, uh, yeah, the thing is that now you, you have two options in the market. When you, uh, when you are formulating a sunscreen product, you have two options, chemical UV filters or mineral UV filters. Mineral UV filters are inorganic. Uh, yeah, it's a natural uh, ingredient. You can, uh, you can uh, transport no? after you pick up from the earth. 
But in the case of chemical, always alchemical, some alchemical UV filters. In our case, our filters are mineral UV filters. But the thing is that we, when we compare our filters with the mineral filters in the market, our filters, according to our manufacturing process, are not nanoparticles. Because in this, in this case, in this industry, nanoparticles, nanoparts, uh, B nanoparticles is not, is not the best option because could be a uh, skin penetration and it's necessary to indicate that you are nano in the, um, in the labeling, in the products. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question, Irene. Um, and uh, it's regarding so you're basically a, a producer of ingredients which are uh, used in cosmetic uh, uh, consumer products. Uh, um, what about your manufacturing process? Is it highly scalable? Uh, and, yes. And well, another issue is uh, you is, have is, been uh, speaking about distributors in, uh, in uh, specific countries. Uh, would there be also a chance maybe to team up uh, with a larger cosmetic company? Uh, so do some maybe some, some, some co-development? Is it also something you have been discussing? Yes, of course. Thank you. It's a, I think it's an important question. Of course, our, our process is, is very scalable. Uh, we check, we, we have checked already this point because nowadays we are, uh, we are under, valida in, under um, validation process with, big, with some big brands. And of course, this is a very, a very important point. Um, yeah, um, of course, one, one, one part of the money, one, one part of the investment, we will destinate to increase our capacity because now our current capacity is, is, is 20 tons. No, but per year, but the objective is to increase, uh, to multiply uh, for uh, four, no? And, and, but this is something that we can reproduce in, um, in, 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 in according, to the, according to the sales, because here the important point is if we had a big brands, a big uh, agreements on the table, and then we can adapt. Our, our growing, no? This is the point that we are here because now ADP uh, is totally aligned with the market, with the trending topics. Uh, because this is no, because I, I, I told you, it's because this is the reality, because the consumer demands um, natural products, because the regulation uh, in the case of the FDA, um, um, there are uh, 14 uh, chemical filters that nowadays I am under analysis. And then the market is moving um, forward uh, mineral UV filters, no? And this is a good opportunity because we produce uh, unique mineral UV filters with additional value. If we compare with mineral UV filter that, that, that there are nowadays in the market, but uh, of course uh, the, the process has to be scalable. This is an important aspect and, and we, we had checked already this point. Thank you, Irene. Now I would like to uh, have the closing remarks of this session. Thank you all for your participation. Uh, my colleague Dimitza will now share with you in the chat a link to the satisfaction survey. Please uh, uh, share your feedback with us. It takes uh, from, two, three, from two to three minutes and your feedback is valuable for us so we can improve for future sessions. And I would like to kindly remind you that today we have a uh, one one meetings from six o'clock CT until seven, and also tomorrow the whole afternoon from two o'clock until six CT. Thank you very much once again for joining us today, and we hope that you enjoyed. It. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice evening. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.